Um, I started putting items into the repository. I think if it feels like about five years ago, maybe that means eight or ten, Joseph. So I don't know, uh, somewhere between five and, and eight years ago. Um, and just to put in the plug that it has, I have really found so much help from the repository, from Joseph, Joseph and the people working um, in the team to help in putting stuff up. Because in the beginning, I was very um, green about it. It has now become so much more streamlined. It makes it immensely easier. Um, it also helps, of course, I suppose now that now when I'm doing something, I know to keep hold of that file so that I can find it more easily and, and work on it and so on. Sometimes I have done that thing of remembering. If you do it soon enough, you remember some of the typos so you can fix them in the the, um, the, the penultimate version so you kind of get a little bit of the, the best of both worlds. Um, like the others, it's really difficult to put my finger on exactly the things that I think um, have have been rewards coming from it. I do have a sense that um, I, I had four invitations to give plenaries at international conferences in the last um, couple of years. And I have a real sense that that has come from exposure um, and, and visibility, um, raising visibility. The other thing that sort of surprised me recently, I was invited to go to Finland to um, act as consultant on a project there that was coming to the end. And one of the reasons they gave for asking me was um, because of my experience in, in disseminating my research and they wanted to learn from that. And in fact, it was really easy in doing my preparation on their stuff before I went. I was driven crazy by the fact that so much of their stuff had been published in books in Finland that I couldn't access. So it was like this was really handing it to me on a plate in terms of what I could advise as what was what was what would be helpful, one of the things that would be helpful for them. Um, the, in terms of citation, as, as the others have said, it's, it's difficult to prove. Um, but what I can say is that, um, uh, as we've all shown, there is a definite benefit in getting that monthly email. It's, it's a, a little ray of sunshine that comes into your, um, your inbox. I definitely enjoy looking at it more than my bank statement, because <laughs> the bank statement, unfortunately, has outgoings, whereas at least it's sort of all profit when you look at your, <laughs> your, um, your library downloads. Um, and you know, when you start looking at you know, 10,000 to 15,000 or whatever, these, you have to wonder, are these in addition? You know, some of them might have been got through accessing the paper through paywalled stuff. But it, it certainly seems to be the case that quite a proportion of them would not be there. And like the others, you, looking at that, um, the, the distribution of countries, um, I was fascinated by the number of China, um, Iran, you know, un, unusual places. I had a theory, I, at one stage, I, I publish in English but also in Irish because my work is on psychology of language and language acquisition and some of my stuff is written in Irish aimed at educators um, here in particular, obviously. Um, but it was fascinating to me that there was an Irish book of mine now out of print because I wrote it and it was published by a previous employer, Institute Jan Gulliach de Aaron, that was being downloaded internationally. Um, now, so maybe some of them were using it as a code book <laughs> in advanced cryptography courses. But if at least some of them were reading it as the research for which it was intended, then I'm pretty sure that they would not have accessed that um, the, the, the paywalled way by you know, a book that is out of print. Um, just to mention, we, we've all talked about the international element, and it's true that it's, it's fascinating to look at the spread of countries. But um, I think in all of the graphs that you showed, and certainly in mine, the Ireland outside of UCD is the top, um, you know, the, the, the most frequent download. And I've discovered, I give um, occasional lectures in um, teacher training in, in, in other institutions in Ireland. And in some cases, students say to me, their library does not have um, subscription to, in some smaller institutions in Ireland. So they do not have access to um, journals that we take 
take it as read that our, at least UCD students will have. Um, and the other thing is that I think we all know students' propensity to read the thing that is most easily available. And we would far rather it would be our stuff or at least peer-reviewed stuff than weird and wonderful stuff that they find somehow on the internet. So I think it's definitely um, a bonus point if what they access easily and quickly happens to be good, you know, the stuff that you want them to find as well as um, some of the other stuff that they may do. Um, so that's the, the national, and I think the national is the aspect that has surprised me most. I think I wanted to look for the international benefits, but I've been more surprised by the national benefits. And as Liam said, the impact stuff, um, certainly seeing, um, having teachers write to me saying, you know, I'd really like to talk to you about this, or I enjoyed that, or whatever, has been immensely um, uh, rewarding to actually feel that the stuff is is making an impact on the very practitioners that you want to reach. The other aspect in terms of international that was um, also something of a surprise to me, I'm sure you've all noticed when you go to the library, to the, the paywall stuff, how often in access to online stuff it will say from 1997 onwards, right? Um, and. Uh, one of the things that had really shocked me um, was how many of the international publishers have not digitized material prior to about 97. 97 seems to come up frequently, 90s, late 90s, as a watershed moment where it's like they're saying, we're not going back further digitally. Now, you and I all, I, I, I suspect you might feel like I do. When you come across this and you think, I need something from 95 or 92, the library has it in hard copy. I must go over there sometime and do it, but you don't, right? It's just, it becomes this obstacle that we are, our world is being constrained to the easy access of the digital resource. Um, I think this is a real problem for science and the advancement of science that we're imposing this sort of ra lowering the ceiling in terms of what is easily accessible. Um, but the other thing in terms of career was I was really, um, I, 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 this point was brought home to me just last week. Um, somebody sent me an article that I had missed that was citing a paper of mine from 93. Now, this was a paper in the Journal of Child Language. The Journal of Child Language did not digitize prior to 1997. It's Cambridge University Press. They, for years and years, said we are only digitizing from 97. They then, at some stage, got their act together and started digitizing prior to that. But they published their archive from 1975 to 1996 in a separately subscribed paywalled archive of digital materials, which even we don't get. So I still cannot access the PDF of the articles that I published there. Um, but I did, a couple of years ago, manage to get my act together to make it open access, right? And a couple of others. And last week, the citation of that paper in a well-regarded high-impact high journal um, by an international author whom I've never met, so it wasn't like she was being friendly or anything, um, devoted half a page of her literature review, a, you know, a significant chunk, to this 1993 paper and concluded at the end of it by saying, and forgive the, you know, I, I, you'll take on board that we're allowed a little bit of self-promotion um, here. Um, <laughs> In spite of the importance of this contribution, this is her quote, in providing a more methodologically sound approach to the identification of what this paper was about, this work has largely been ignored and researchers have carried on using the flawed di diagnostic method, despite those flaws, right? So what she was saying was this paper that had been published in a good journal got lost in this window of stuff that has not been digitized and is no longer easily available. So there is a definite case there to be made, and I'm not even talking about prehistory. I mean, 93 doesn't seem all that long ago. Um, so, you know, I think that there's a real issue there, both in terms of scientific advancement. We should not be losing easy access to good 
research that has been done and gone through peer review and sort of is getting lost in the mix because of the digitization policies of people who don't know anything about the research. Um, but there's also the issue for our own benefits and there could well be an, a, a bias entering in in terms of age of academics as well that has a, a greater effect on some academics um, rather than others. So um, I think it's really important that you, if you are thinking about doing um, going the open access route, and I hope many of you will, that you'll also consider going back to older papers, not just the stuff that is hot off the, the press um, from your, your computer. So I just want to conclude by saying, I, I think the experience that we've heard today has been talking about us having very positive experiences from the, the um, repository exposure. I think uploading to the repository has got easier and easier. Some of that is we've got, I've got better at doing it, um, but there's also the thing that the, the system has got easier. Um, the fact that the repository um, staff are checking about copyright and so on is very reassuring. Um, but I'm also really aware that despite the good that is accruing to us, that the, the library staff are, you know, are, are not gaining people, you know, and, and not increasing in numbers year by year. Instead, it's a very small core of people doing what has become increasing work. So I really like, I hope that you will join me in recommending to UCD um, that more prioritization be given to staffing and resourcing the repository in UCD. I think it has become a, a shining example. I think it's leading the way in Irish library circles. Um, and I think that we need to represent this to our colleagues in order to increase the exposure within the UCD. But, while we're reaping the benefits that accrue to us. And that UCD is, is benefiting as well, so it needs to be a well-resourced uh, facility um, to help us. So thank you.